So in today's video, we will be looking at a trick to memorize all the lens ray diagrams so that you can easily remember them for your exams. So let's get into the first part. Let's first talk about convex or converging lenses. And so there are gonna be six scenarios we need to memorize for a converging lens. And I wanna show you a trick to remember five of these really easily. So what you need to do is you need to label your f and 2f and infinity on both sides of the lens. Here we have the virtual side of the lens and here we have the real side of the lens. And this is the trick to remember five of the six scenarios. We draw one at infinity, two in between infinity and 2f, three in between at 2f, four in between 2f and f, and five at f, which is the focal point. And on the other side, we'll draw a one at our focal point, two in between f and 2f, three at 2f, four in between 2f and infinity, and five at infinity. And so what does this trick do? Well, if I draw an object at say one on our virtual side, so if I drew an object right here, we know that it will appear on the focal point of the real side. If I drew an object on say two, we know it will appear in between f and 2f on the real side. And so this trick will help you remember where the image will appear if you place the object in these five locations. So what's another thing we have to remember about these images? Well, the first thing we need to remember about all five of these images that will be created on the real side is that all of the images will be real. So if an object is placed at infinity, at, in between infinity and 2f, at 2f, in between 2f and f, or at f, all the images that will appear will be real. They will also be inverted. So that means they will be upside down. So all the images would be facing downwards. So another thing we need to remember is the size of your image. When we learn this trick, we need to remember that if you move your object down closer to the lens, your image gets increasingly larger. So if I were to place an object at say two, the image would be inverted, but say slightly reduced. If I place the same object at 2f, it will be the exact same size at 2f on the other side, on the real side. If I place an object at say location four, it will become magnified at four on the real side. So you can see that as you slide your object down closer to the lens, your image will get increasingly magnified. So when you place your object at infinity or in between infinity and 2f, your object will appear reduced in size. And if you place your object at 2f, it will be the same sized image at 2f on the real side or on the right hand side of our screen. And if you place your object in between 2f and f, then your image will be magnified or greater than the object size on the real side. So your image can either be reduced or magnified. You just need to keep track where it's placed. So if your object is placed in between infinity and 2f, your image will be reduced. At 2f, your image will be the same size. And if you place your object in between 2f and f, then your image will be magnified. So that's how you can remember five of the six scenarios very easily. Let's move on to the sixth scenario. So our sixth scenario is if I were to place an object in between our focal point and the lens. So say over here. Before we had placed it at infinity, in between infinity and 2f, at 2f, in between 2f and f, now we're gonna be placing it in between f and the lens itself. And so if we place our object in between there, our image will appear on the virtual side and it will be upright 
and magnified. So whenever your object is placed in between f and the lens, your image will always be virtual, upright, and magnified. So as you move your object closer to your lens, the magnification will reduce. And so that's how you memorize the sixth scenario. All right, now let's look at concave or divergent lenses. There's only one scenario that can occur for a diverging lens or a concave lens. Remember that this is the virtual side for lenses. And this is the real side. If I place my object on the virtual side, your image will always be upright, virtual, and reduced. So it will be smaller than your object. So all you have to remember is that for a concave diverging lens, your image will always be upright, virtual, and reduced. And if you move the object closer to the lens, the image will get larger. If you move your object further away from your lens, your image will be smaller. Okay, so let's look at a quick summary of what we went over. So there's going to be seven scenarios total. A convex lens will have six scenarios. We used a trick to memorize five of them using the numbering pattern. And so convex lenses can form magnified or reduced inverted real images. The sixth case is where we placed it in between the focal point and the lens. And if an object is placed there, it will only form a magnified upright virtual image. Then we looked at concave lenses. There's only one scenario for a concave lens. If you place your object on the virtual side, your image will always be a reduced upright virtual image. And so hopefully that helps you memorize the ray diagrams for a concave and convex lenses. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like because it helps out a lot. Comment if you have any questions and subscribe for more weekly content. Have a good day.